The next thing I want to do is show you how to integrate virtual instruments into your montage performances. We've already seen that to some extent when we sent the MIDI output from the CFX performance into the Mark IV Rhodes. Um, but what I want to do now is actually get virtual instruments right into a montage performance so that you can control them as individual parts. Now what I've got here is a very dry DX7 uh, clavinet patch. I'm just going to turn off the sound from uh, the internal tone generator so we can just hear the DX7. And it's a very dry patch as I said. But because we are routing the output for that into the digital left and right input for the montage, we can use the montage's own effects to influence that. So if I head into the mixer, then I can head into the mixer, I can turn up a huge amount of reverb, for example. Or I can even configure my own. So uh, let's head into the edit menu and I'm going to go to uh, the variation. I will choose a distortion and uh, let's have a comp distortion delay there. Then let's come back to the mixer and turn that right up. And now we're hearing that uh, amp simulation working on the DX7 sound. Right, let's undo that and let's go and add some stuff to our performance. So I'm going to start off with the CFX padded performance. And what this is, is uh, four parts of piano for the CFX plus two pad parts. I'm just going to get rid of this virtual uh, instrument now and uh, we'll see that's just you can see that uh, montage connect has just broadcast itself uh, which I didn't actually want it to do at that point so let's just bring back CFX padded for the moment and uh, what we have is this padded piano and I want to replace these two pad parts with a virtual pad so we only need one. Let's get rid of that part. We'll delete that one. And now uh, we're going to work with part five. So let's add our pad first of all. It's just going to be a software instrument going into the montage di digital left and right input. And uh, I've got this all set up already. It's a pigments pad. I'll wait for that to load and record arm. And now you can hear that in the background. But right now, it's responding to every MIDI message. Um, and I don't want it to do that. I only want it to respond on part five. So let's go into the MIDI setup here and tell it to respond only to the montage port one and only on part five. But what we now have is we also have the um, original pad sound here. So let's go and get rid of that. Um, what we can, can do here is just say edit and change the part output to off. And now that particular part won't make any sound through the um, montage itself. Uh, and so we're going to only hear the pigment pad. But why stop there? Let's add a bass as well. So this time let's uh, go grab a new virtual instrument. Let's have um, something from Complete Control. We'll let that load up. Let's grab a bass from, how about uh, Massive? Let's have an analog bass from there. That'll do. 
do. We'll allow that to load. And uh, now we should be able to see that uh, when it's record armed, we will hear that. But it's also here playing all the way up here, which I don't want. Um, I want it to end maybe on this D sharp. Uh, so let's go and edit the key limit because we have no individual control for it at the moment. Let's go D sharp 2. So now we should have a limit to where it sounds from. And now, as I said, it's uh, currently responding just like the pad was to the entire keyboard and all MIDI messages. So let's change that now to say only the montage and only on channel six. Well, now we're not going to hear it at all because we have nothing being broadcast on part six. So let's add something. Um, we're just going to say an initialized AWM sound like that. Come back up and now we'll edit that part. Let's call it massive bass. We're going to turn off the output again, just as we did with the pad. And now I can control it. So if I turn off keyboard control for all of these other parts, then you can only hear that bass. Let's add keyboard control for the pad as well. Let's bring them all back in. But why stop there? We've got an arpeggiator. So let's uh, arpeggiate that uh, entirely unsuitable bass. Uh, I'm going to turn off the arpeggiator for everything else. You can see that my uh, montage screen is having a bit of a glitch at the moment. Let's go and turn on the arpeggiator for the massive bass and you can edit that part. We will go to arpeggio and search for one in here. Let's have general. Let's do a an up down two octave. Turn on the arpeggiator and hear it, except we won't. Why can't we hear that by being arpeggiated? Well, it's because if we recall, by default, under MIDI settings, the arpeggiator happens after MIDI out. So we need to set the arpeggiator to happen before MIDI out so that it's going to arpeggiate this virtual instrument and not just whatever's coming out of the tone generator. So we'll do that with ARP MIDI out. And now we'll hear it being arpeggiated with that uh, entirely unsuitable arpeggio. Let's uh, see if we can improve that somewhat. We'll edit the part again. This one, edit the arpeggio. Let's have a random two octave. Let's see if that works. Perhaps we're actually just using an entirely unsuitable bass. That's better. So what we have now is a montage performance, including a virtual pad and a virtual bass, using the arpeggiator to control one of those instruments.